For most of the 19th century, a town's success largely depended upon one thing. The railroad, people take it for granted nowadays. People underestimate how important the railroads were. People used to fight over that stuff. People used to practically go to war over that stuff. They were lying, they would cheat, they would rig elections, all kinds of stuff. It's a whole game changer. In the 19th century, the terms online and offline referred to railroads. You know, to be online meant that you were hooked in to a worldwide communication network similar to the internet today. Council Bluffs dived headfirst into the railroad game and came out the big winner. Council Bluffs was where the East ended. All of the railroads came here. They all ended up in Council Bluffs. Why did all the railroads come to Council Bluffs? Railroads came to the U.S. in about the 1830s. They started, of course, on the East Coast, and from about the time that the railroads hit America, everybody wanted to make sure that those railroads made it all the way across the country. But the North and the South were divided, and it obviously didn't get any better. It ended up in the Civil War. There were lots and lots and lots of conversations about where the railroad, the Transcontinental Railroad, should go. Should it go to the North, through New York and Chicago and Minneapolis, and across to Portland? Or should it go to the South, through Atlanta and New Orleans and Houston and all of those Southern cities? Nobody could come to an agreement because it meant whichever part of the country got the railroad, was going to win the economic war. So Abraham Lincoln had property in Council Bluffs, but he was campaigning for president. And one of his campaign platforms was he was gonna make sure that that railroad finally got built. So he came here, checked on his property, and he met with Dodge. And he said, Dodge, where should the railroad go? Dodge pointed across the river and he said, it goes right down the Platte River Valley from Council Bluffs. The Midwest was never part of the plan for how the railroad was going to go across the country. But when the North and the South finally divided and Congress was left only with the North, they could finally decide on a route. So in 1862, the Pacific Railroad Act finally passed and they decided they would build a transcontinental railroad. But they didn't say where. They didn't say where exactly it was going to start. So in 1863, Abraham Lincoln had to write an executive order. He had to clarify it again in 1864, but the bottom line was, he said, the railroad starts on the Iowa side of the Missouri River across from the city of Omaha. Great, settled. Council Bluffs has it made for the rest of its life. Except, Washington was a long way away, and bridges cost a lot of money. And the railroad was gonna earn its money based on the amount of track it laid, and the amount of track it built. So Thomas Durant, who was building the railroad, said, they'll never find out. I'm gonna start the railroad on the Omaha side of the river. So in 1865, when the war ended and there were finally men and supplies and the kinds of things that you needed that, to build a railroad, he turned the first shovel of dirt in Omaha, not in Council Bluffs. So from 1863 until there was a bridge in 1873, all of those railroads that needed to come from the East Coast to get to the West had one destination, Council Bluffs, Iowa. If they wanted to get further West, they had to meet here in Council Bluffs. That's why you see all these railroads that are coming to Council Bluffs, but they didn't have a bridge. In fact, there wasn't a bridge until 1873. So why did they build a railroad and no bridge? Well, there's a lot of reasons for that. Bridges cost money, but you know what else bridges do? Absence of a bridge divides a railroad line. Well, when you buy a ticket, you buy a ticket from a point to a terminus. So you'd buy a ticket in Chicago or New York or Philadelphia, and you'd go to the terminus point, which is Council Bluffs. And then you'd buy another ticket to go from Omaha to wherever the railroad went at that point. So how many tickets does the railroad get to sell? Right, how much cash does the railroad get to collect? And that happens for freight as well. So it wasn't really in the railroad's interest to build that bridge. But in 1872, a couple of Iowans took Union Pacific to court. And by 1875, it had gotten to the U.S. Supreme Court because they said, Lincoln said the railroad starts here, here in Council Bluffs. They won, and that's what resulted in the building of the transfer hotel and the shops that we have here, 
Unfortunately, by then, the huge shops were already built in Omaha. So they won the court case, but they lost the business of the railroad, and it went west from there. But what Council Bluffs got was where the east ended. All of the railroads came here. All of those folks coming in from the east came here, and they all ended up someplace in Council Bluffs. So all those railroads came here. We did get that economy. History is never truly lost until it's forgotten. And preserving that history is our mission. The Historical Society of Pottawatomie County in Council Bluffs, Iowa.